Good morning, everyone. On this uh, Father's Day, we congratulate all you fathers with a blessed and wonderful day. We also want you to know that there was a missions presentation done by Kathy Bloy. Uh, it should be a link down below for you to look at that, and I encourage you to do so. This morning, uh, we're going to be finishing uh, in Proverbs the House of Wisdom, and uh, the pillar that we're going to talk about today is the pillar of understanding, the wisdom of understanding what wickedness and sin looks like. Uh, there's a lot of scripture on that. And so let's start off by saying um, that the uh, in Proverbs, the sixth chapter, there's an immense amount of uh, scripture uh, in reference to what that is. But before we get going too far, let me pray. And in case there's any of you out there who are really feeling ill in your body, Let's take care of that right away. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for what you've done in our lives already this week. And we just ask in the name of Jesus that every physical issue, every mental issue would be uh, relieved and removed in the name of Jesus. And that these people that are listening would find wholeness in their body, soul, and spirit. And for this, we give you thanks. Bless the teaching that it makes sense and that it would flow according to your word. Amen. Well, the Bible says in chapter 6 of verse 12 that uh, talks about a worthless person, a wicked man. In, in Hebrews, that means one that's good for nothing. Um, it's a, uh, a son of Belial. And uh, a man worthless, a man of, of no value. Scripture then lists seven things that these worthless uh, people do. And one of those, as you will find, is that they walk in a perverse mouth and speech. So let me go there and I'll read it to you in exactness so you can um, know it's coming straight from the word. A worthless person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. Now, the word here for walk with a perverse mouth or speech is tied very closely to, if you go down in your Bible, to uh, chapter or the same chapter, verses 16 on through 19, it says, these six things God hates. Yes, even our, and seven are an abomination to him. And the first one it mentions is a proud look. So we know that a person with a perverse mouth and speech is a person also that has a very proud look. Um, when you look in certain parts of the, the world and even in our community, you'll find where sin seems to congregate. Uh, there is someone there who seems to be the top of dog of this arrogant speech and a proud look. And they really look at that person as if he is really special or she's really special. In uh, many of the drug uh, areas of our towns and um, in our state, uh, you'll find that there is someone who prides himself on being the ringleader of all this destruction. And there are people who want to be just like him. They can hardly wait to be like him. The Bible says that that is wickedness. Another thing that they do is that they wink with their eyes. And uh, the winking with their eyes is, uh, I would tie it to 17 where it says a lying tongue. It's where someone says something they know that is uh, a lie, and then they just kind of, to others around them, they just wink. Now, we all have done that with our children, where we've told this uh, unbelievably outlandish story, and uh, to let them know that it is just that, we'll wink and laugh at, and they'll know that we are just exaggerating. But in this particular case, it's talking about a person who is giving themselves over to lying and wink and think it's funny uh, that they're deceiving someone. The Bible says they also then shuffle with their feet. And um, another one that is used that to describe it says they speak with their feet. Uh, and I've heard this from pastors forever. People vote with their feet. They don't show up the next Sunday. <laughs> there was something not too good. Um, it, it's they vote with their feet. They either come or they don't come, or when they come. So we know that uh, the Bible talks about 
that in verse 18, that the feet that are swift to running to mischief. So there are feet that are constantly showing us. People says, well, that, I told you what I meant. Yeah, but I saw what you did. And that has a lot more power than what you speak, speak with your mouth. It's what you do. Uh, people say, well, I was going to get that. I have a friend. I still consider him a friend who, who uh, has been telling me now for, oh, my goodness, six months. Uh, yeah, he's going to pick up a part-time job so he'll have some money. Well, he doesn't have a part-time job and he doesn't have any money. Next thing is the Bible talks about they point with their fingers. And uh, you tie that over to uh, verse uh, 17 again. It says, the hand that shed innocent blood. So we have this whole attitude again of things that they do. They're, they're always pointing things out. They're always showing everybody else's shortcomings and often become violent towards that person. Deceitfulness is uh, part of what they do. Number five, and um, they have perversity of spirit. Uh, they're always of heart. They're always coming up with something that is perverse. I I've met people like this um, who uh, their, their minds are so far out there in their perverseness. Uh, there was a man years ago that I worked at. He would go around every Monday morning to try to interview everybody at work and what kind of sexual relationship they had that weekend. And I would just look at him and said, get out of here. You know, you're, you're so perverse. Um, and he thought that was the funniest thing, that a righteous man would tell him that he's perverse. And he would get so tickled over that. But he was just what he was. He was a man who was deceived and deceiving others and causing others to want to be like him, for pity's sakes. He devises, number six thing they do, they devise evil continually. They're always plotting and scheming and planning sin. Uh, I met these people. They're all around us. In fact, I think they're growing in number. The seventh one is they sow discord. And, uh, and this is not only discord in any one place, it's discord wherever they seem to go. Uh, we've even seen evidence of that in the church where a particular issue becomes so important that it can split a church and has nothing to do with the saving of souls, which we were sent to do. It's all about, uh, you know, what translation we use. Yeah, I think there's a reason for that, and I think we need to think that through strongly. There are some really bad ones out there, but I also know that I'm not going to let that become the thing that keeps me from leading people to Jesus. And if those unsaved people relate, well, then fine, until they grow up enough to be able to do something else and read something else, I'm going to leave them alone. There are people who show up on the scene and want to, someone just found Christ their Savior, and they want to change everything about them. Oh, you weren't baptized right. Well, let them grow just a little bit so they can understand that. To be them, it just becomes a religious thing. Well, that's how you did it religiously and you want me to do it this way religiously, I'm okay. I just give them a little space and time, and you know what? Almost inevitably, they get baptized in water when they understand it. Five things to know about the wicked. These are just five things that I pulled out. There are plenty more, but these are just five that I chose. First thing, wicked people lie. Yeah, wow, amazing. They lie. Everything that they say, they lie. They, everything that comes out of their mouth just about is a lie. And a lie is not necessarily an outright overall lie. It is a deceptive thing. They don't tell you everything. They tell you pieces of things to lead you to believe something that isn't true. And then they'll say, but I never said that. But that's where they led you, and they knew they were leading you, so they lied. Bible says in Proverbs 19.9, a false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies shall perish. Verse 11 of 29, a fool vent all of his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. Oh, I'm going to tell you something right here. I know people 
who can't keep a job because they vent everything they think. If it comes into their mind, it comes out their mouth. And next thing you know, they're being fired. They're walking out the door. They're doing all kinds of things because they vent everything. It's the person who, father who says to his children uh, things that, you know, they upset them and they just say things, comes into their head. Well, you're an idiot. You don't call your children idiots. You don't call your children negative things. You tell your children, this isn't at all like you. What's going on here? Let them know that you hold them to a standard and you perceive them and see them at a different place. And they fell short of that because that's not who they really are. But when you call them an idiot or say you're just stupid, well, what do you want them to be? You don't do that. The Bible says, do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. The 8th chapter, 18th chapter, verse 8, the words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the innermost. You know, one of the things about uh, gossip, some people say, well, I don't have a whole lot of sin. Well, do you love a good, juicy story about someone? I had a lady who uh, told me, oh, she just loves those kind of things. And what's so sad is she was a pastor's wife. She, I was taken back. Just love to know all the juicy things about what's going on with other pastors and what's going on with the different people that they may know or we may know in common. Um, my goodness, you know, that goes down inside you. It's like a juicy morsel, but it changes you. And it changes the people around you. Don't, don't be chewing on this stuff. I, I confronted a person this week. Why is it when you say something that's really wrong, you laugh? Why don't you cry? You're a disappointment to the Holy Spirit. You grieve the Spirit. Why doesn't that bring you to sorrow? Why does it cause you to laugh? And the person said, it's not laughing like laughter, Pastor. It's, I'm just nervous about, and I feel awkward about what I just said. Whoever, dis whoever has a deceitful heart finds no good. And he who has a perverse tongue falls into evil. Whoever rewards evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. You, know, you see people that start off and they start doing things and they think they're getting away with things as they start to uh, cause other people heartache. They think they're really winning. You're not winning. The day is coming. You will stand before the Lord. And you will lose everything you ever thought you possessed and gained. And if that person that you took from is a godly person, they will get rewards beyond their wildest dreams forever. And you will have nothing. He who despises the word will be destroyed. But he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. <clears throat> There are those who just despise. When you quote the word of God to them, they despise it. They want to argue. I won't argue the point with them. I always let them know when the Holy Spirit's prepared your heart, I'll continue this. Tell them you can believe whatever you want. Free world. You're one of God's kids. You just don't want to listen. Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Really guard what comes out of your mouth. It, it, it will change you. People say, oh, I was only joking. I'll tell you something. The Bible says that out of your mouth, your heart speaks. If you speak it the first time, you think, well, I got away with that. Nothing really happened. You didn't really get away with anything. 
because it altered you. It's like taking crack cocaine. You take a one time or meth one time and you're already mentally, physically being altered. Taking stuff out of your mouth and projecting it out there. You say, well, I didn't mean a whole lot by it. But you'll find that the next time is easier and the next time is easier. That's why the scripture even warns to turn off the flow before you get started because you know yourself on certain subjects once you start. It is all hard to stop talking about things and you go right on by all the stop signs the Holy Spirit puts up because it's a subject that really burns in you. And it's not wrong to discuss things, but it's wrong sometimes on how we discuss things and where we discuss things. So we know the first thing about the wicked is they lie. They just all do. I said, if you're a drug user, you're a liar. They go hand in hand. You can't get drugs without lying. You can't maintain that lifestyle without lying. You just lie. Anybody who's caught up into a particular sin also lies. That's what they do. It's what they have to do to continue on that lifestyle. They lie. Second one is wicked people justify themselves. They're always telling the reason why what they did wasn't bad. I'm going to read you a couple of them. For those that get the notes, you'll see them in your notes. The 19th chapter, foolishness of a man twists his ways and his heart frets against the Lord. How many people have I met who when they do things and it don't turn out the way they think it ought to, they get mad at God and blame him. Talked to a person here the last couple days who was also going through this whole thing. Well, why, why isn't it this way? How come God doesn't cure this? Well, God didn't create it. You did. Your own wicked ways created this mess. And now you just think that you found Christ your Savior and all out of vanish into thin air. Uh, well, uh, no. Uh, if you got caught robbing a bank uh, and then you asked Jesus to forgive you even while you were in prison, does he? Yes. So if you died, you're going to heaven. Eternity is taken care of, but God put governments in place to take care of the things this way, how man treats man. And when you robbed that bank, you broke those rules. So you are not only standing under the Lord's rules, you're standing under the rules and the governments of the land. And if they say you're going to spend the next 12 years in prison and you say, well, that's not fair. Of course it's fair. It's perfectly right. You got God's rules. And you got rules that God gave authority to man to hold. Who can say, I have made my heart clean. I am pure from my sin. <laughs> I've actually had people tell me that they, they have never sinned. Yeah, okay. You just call God a liar. That's what it says there in John. You say, I have never sinned. Liar. Well, I've never lied. Liar. Wickedness is always defending themselves, justifying themselves. The Bible says, A haughty look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked are sin. It is not good to eat much honey, so to seek one's own glory, it's not glory. If you got to seek it and proclaim it and pr proclaim how good you are and how great you are, well, that's not glory at all. The glory is when others see that and start to proclaim these truths. An angry man stirs up strife and a furious man abounds in transgression. A man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Oh, we've all been around people who are just, they're just angry people. Always angry. You can be sitting around a campfire and everybody's having a great time. And all of a sudden, an angry person comes. And next thing you know, the whole atmosphere changed because he brought that same demonic spirit with him. It's attached to him. And all of a sudden, the whole atmosphere changes and people are just grabbing and yamming at each other and having opinions about things. Uh, just anger stirs up. So I always tell you, be very careful of crowds. 
You think, well, I would never be carried away. Well, that's not too true. I'm not saying not to be part of a crowd. Just make sure that what you are doing is right before the Lord. And if you're going to march for a cause, make sure it's a godly cause and make sure your heart is right with God all the time you're doing it. And you could spot the fools and the rebels and the demonic, demonized people that are in this crowd that are stirring them up to do other than what you intended to do. Be mindful of that. We're going to have a lot more of that in these last days. The wicked desire evil. Wicked people just desire to be around evil people. The Bible says the soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no favor in his eyes. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. Yeah. Where there is no talebearer, strife ceases. As charcoal is to burning wood, coals, the wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. If you want to have peace, sometimes you just got to ask people to leave. They're just stirring up strife in your gatherings. You're just going to have to ask them to leave. I've had people threaten me as a pastor. Well, if you don't do what like I think you ought to do, then we're leaving. Okay. <laughs> it never threatens me. It's not my church. It belongs to the Lord. And he'll bring who he wants. And all the demonized ones who don't like it here, the like way things are going or whatever, 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 you can't threaten someone who don't own it. Ain't happening. You put no fear in me. I stand before the Lord and I go home before the Lord. I sleep before the Lord. So those little petty things mean nothing to me. Search out the Lord. The Bible talks about that the immoral woman or man are unstable. Do not get to know them. Isn't that interesting? The Bible clearly says that they're an unstable group. So let's not uh, become like them in what we're doing. Do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. For the perverse person is an, uh, an abomination to the Lord. For his secret counsel is with the upright. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just. Next thing we know about these uh, wicked people, they do not desire, they, we are not to desire to be with them and become part of their company. The Bible talks about, uh, my son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. And then later it says, so the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain, it takes away the life of its owner. And we know in Psalms chapter 1, a uh, very powerful psalm, it says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't walk with them, nor stand in the path of sinners. You notice their progression from ungodliness to, to be called sinners. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Who are they scorning? The godly people. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. And God will make him like a tree planted by the river of water and bring forth his fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sin he's in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. There's a progression to sin. Nobody just starts off by doing something over the top crazy. They usually start by being with someone who is moving in that direction or has been living in that for a while. And finally they get themselves entrapped and they become just like those people. Their hearts are become hardened, and they no longer seek the things of God. I'm just going to read a couple more. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be content, uh, envious of the wicked, for there will be no prospect for the evil man. The lamp of the wicked will be put out. When everything's said and done, everything will be gone. When we were up in on vacation uh, last week, 
uh, in northern Wisconsin. We went to see to the graveside of my mother and father and her mother and father and grandma. And um, what's really interesting is when you go there, there's nothing there, just a stone, just grass. But yet they would worked their whole life. And what do they have? A stone. That's it. But in eternity, because they knew Christ, they have tremendous amount of glorious things that God is going to give to them. They got a home that's beautiful. Lastly, God overthrows the wicked. The Bible goes on and says, A righteous man wisely considers the house of the wicked, overthrowing the wicked for their wickedness. God is going to get rid of all that inevitably. People say, well, look like the wicked's taken over America. Short-lived. Inevitably, God shows up. The Bible does say things will get more wicked. Didn't say it had to be wicked in our area. We're, we're not inept. We have the power of God. And that's one of the things that the world never takes into account. That God is not dead, he's alive, and his power has not been shrunk. Be very mindful of that. A couple more things. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. And there's a lot more here that I'm not going to read. I want to end with this one. My dad would, uh, I heard my dad quote this one. <laughs> Proverbs 26, 11. As a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. We had a dog up in Ryland when I was a kid growing up. That dog would just curl you up when you watch him. He would eat grass. He'd get all slimed up. He'd puke it all out. And then you look at him, he'd start eating it again. I go, oh, my Lord, what's wrong with you, dog? But the Bible, evidently they've been doing this for thousands of years because he wrote about it. The Bible says that people who choose to be wicked continue to go back to their wickedness. They swear up and down they're never going to do that again. But they do. I'm going to pray for you right now that God would have revealed to you what wickedness looks like. And if there's been wickedness that you've seen in your own life, can we pray right now that Jesus would forgive you of that sin? And you mean that in your heart. And tell someone, I prayed this prayer. And seek out a place where you can come and worship. If it's in this area, come here. You don't have to come here. But I'd like to preach to you. If you're far away or out of the area, not capable of coming here, find a nice, healthy church and proclaim Christ with them. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us all that we've done wrong. Forgive us all the times we told you we wouldn't do it again, but we did it again. And Lord, you already knew we were going to do it again because we never resolved the real issue. So Lord, I ask that you would forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And may you come and dwell in us and may we serve you with our whole heart. It's just not an asking thing. It's a determination that we're going to serve you. In Christ's name we pray, amen.